Chapter 406-408 Do not question me Black Setsu. Project Suki no Mi will be completed no matter what it takes. Abito said decisively. Really? After a pause, Black Setsu sneered, but the way you are right now, you don't seem to be able to do anything, even the likes of Homosubi managed to kill you, how do you plan on continuing from here on? All we have managed to do is capture a single bijou, and the whole shinobi world is already aware of Akatsuki's intentions. What do you plan to do from here on out? Fire great shinobi villages, and Amitsukami, how do you plan to oppose them all with that meager strength of yours? Even those without space-time jutsu managed to kill you, to me, you look nothing more than a pathetic loser. Drip. The gloomy cave fell into silence, and only the faint sound of water dripping could be heard. It is not the first time that Black Setsu and Abito have discussed this topic. Since Akatsuki's defeat in the Summit War, Black Setsu has repeatedly brought out this topic. Black Setsu couldn't understand the reason behind Abito's hesitation. In Black Setsu's view, anything that is useful and will benefit them should be taken without any hesitation, whether it belongs to them or not, and here they are talking about something that is already Abito's, so why the hesitation? No to mention Black Setsu, even the relatively simple-minded White Setsu doesn't understand what's stopping Abito from taking back something that is already Abito's. Questioned by both Black and White Setsu, Abito was silent, he couldn't bring himself to say it, after all, that thing no longer belongs to him. It was his last gift to Kakashi, at the same time, it also carries the hope that Abito no longer has from this world. If it is really taken back, then even the last bits of Achiha Abito who once dreamt of becoming the Hokage would completely disappear. Aside from his intention of not wanting to face Kakashi, Abito does not want to personally bury the last bit of his innocence himself. But Black Setsu does not care about Abito's intentions, nor does he care about Abito's emotions. At the moment, when he saw the leader of Amitsukami, and the kind of powers the leader of Amitsukami has, Black Setsu felt unprecedented crises. Being a product of Atsutsuki Kagaya's will, Black Setsu obviously realizes that the kind of powers the leader of Amitsukami was using are similar to that of Hagoromo and Hamura. There are various theories in his mind about the possible identity of Yama, and if any of them are correct then he is going to have serious trouble reviving Kagaya from here on out. Therefore, he has spared no effort in increasing Akatsuki's strength to further his plans. And increasing Abito's strength is also one of them, after all, there has to be a counter of Nagato, because Nagato is just a puppet necessary to bring Madara back to life at the right opportunity. Zetsu has to consider the possibility that Madara might not be revived with how things are turning out, so it is necessary for him to increase Abito's strength to ensure that Project Suki no Mi is completed, whether through Madara or through Abito, it must be completed. After all, Nagato's intentions are to suppress the shinobi world with force, and bring peace using pain, he has no knowledge of what the Project Suki no Mi truly entails, and Zetsu is quite sure that Nagato would not support the idea as well. But Abito's goal is Project Suki no Mi, so Abito is a good alternative, but the alternative has to be strong too, otherwise, the strength of revived Kagaya would be very weak. Therefore, Abito's strength must be increased for the grand scheme of things. Seeing Abito's silence, Black Zetsu said, if you do not want to take it back yourself, why not use other Akatsuki members, if you want, we can use Toby Sr. too. It's my business, I will take care of it myself you do not need to intervene. Abito said coldly, then asked, is there any news about Shino? I have had my clones track his whereabouts, although I did not find any information that would directly point to Shino, however, I did manage to get a hold of one of Shino's former subordinates, he used to be a shinobi of the Land of Sky and was quite a close aide to Shino but for some reason, he betrayed the land of Sky and even quit his life as a shinobi. Perhaps because he had some conflicts with Shino's methods. Anyway, after I obtained all the information from him about Shino, I was able to find the location where his base should have been. Black Setsu said. Abito raised his eyes brow, was there. Does that mean it's no longer there? What do you mean? Black Setsu said, I am not too sure either. It seemed that Shino had his subordinates turn an old ruined temple into some kind of air fortress which is probably the place he is hiding in. Abito said, if he is really in an air fortress, tracking him would be almost impossible. Zetsu nodded, yes, I couldn't find anything else that would give me any more information about his whereabouts, moreover, since he has betrayed us, he hasn't made any more public appearances. Abito had a thoughtful look on his face, and questioned, so what is your input in this? Black Zetsu said, if I have to think, then I would say he is probably already dead. That does make sense, with his character, I don't think he is the type who would remain silent for such a long time, and it can only be Amitsukami who could have killed him so silently. Concluded Abito, and thought, it's also possible that Amitsukami's hideout is somewhere in the sky, this would also explain why all our search to locate Amitsukami's hideout has turned into vain. After reaching this conclusion, Abito made sure that he would try to find a method to carry out aerial investigation no matter how incredibly hard it may be. Next, Abito asked, is there any information about Orochimaru's whereabouts? 
I do have some leads that might possibly lead to Orochimaru, but I am not so sure. Zetsu replied. Abito asked again, where is he? White Zetsu said, if the information is correct then he should be somewhere in the land of rice fields, oh sorry, now it is called the land of sound. The country has been renamed into the land of sound some time ago. Land of sound. Abito repeated. Zetsu nodded, yes, there are rumors about a new shinobi village coming into existence in the land of sound. They call themselves Odogekure. Odogekure ha. Huh? Does this have anything to do with Orochimaru, is there any connection between them? Abito asked. Zetsu said with a sigh, as I mentioned, I am not so sure. But what do you want with him? Abito thought a little, let the new recruits go after him, and see how that turns out. Each of the four of them has quite the potential, it would also allow me to test their abilities and figure out on what level they truly stand and plan out my further strategy. Zetsu nodded, then asked, do you also want to send Toby Sr.? Abito shook his head, then said, not him, I don't want to reveal his existence right now, he will be one of the trump cards. Let Biwa Juzo go with them, it would be a reunion for the Kirigikure Shinobi. Zetsu nodded, but will they be able to kill Orochimaru? Abito sighed, hard to say, even I am not sure if killing Orochimaru is even possible or not, let's just use him for testing out the four of them, then we can have Nagato deal with Orochimaru. Zetsu then said, and what do you plan to do with Kirigikure now? Abito said, the fact that Yugura was being controlled by me has already been revealed to the high level of Kirigikure, and Amitsukumi so it's pointless to take control of Kirigikure again. The Sanbai sealed inside him is important, but I suppose that can wait for now. When the other villages hear news about this, it will cause an uproar and complicate things a little bit, but I suppose it changes nothing in the end anyway. Let Akatsuki lay low for a while until everyone has recovered. For Kage have already become prey to Akatsuki. Both Sandame and Yandame Kazakage were killed by Sasori, Yandame Hokage died because of Akatsuki, and Yandame Mizukage became a puppet in Akatsuki's hands, with this it is natural that the Kage will become incredibly vigilant and more aggressive to hunt down Akatsuki, so it is better that Akatsuki lay low for a while, until everyone has recovered to their full strength. Zetsu nodded, and with everything discussed both Setsu and Abito left the land of water and went into the direction of the land of waves. A few nights later in Kirigikure. You, Plop. Was all this particular Kirigikure Umbu managed to say before his consciousness became dull and he fell asleep on the floor, snore. After taking care of the Umbu, Itachi withdrew his gaze and said to the person who came from the other side of the passage, the guard in this passage has been taken care of Tsukihei-san. Hmm, the one on my side has also been resolved. Let's move forward, said Tsukihei. Then together with Itachi she started to go deeper inside the Mizukage building. As both Itachi and Tsukihai walked side by side, Itachi suddenly said, the security here is a bit abnormal. Tsukihai, knew but asked Itachi nonetheless, why do you think so Itachi-kun? Itachi said, the number of guards is very low, moreover, their strength is also not nearly enough for the job. Tsukihai nodded with a thoughtful expression, that is true I suppose. The level of security is indeed quite low, it's almost as if someone is inviting us inside. The level of security in the Mizukage building is indeed abnormal. After sneaking inside the Mizukage building, Tsukihai and Itachi have only encountered about six guards up to now, and their strength was only at the level of an elite genin. Such a low level of combat force is being used to protect the Kage of a great shinobi village, not to mention a shinobi village that has just gone through a civil war three days ago, it's obvious that the situation is a bit abnormal, and Tsukihai does not deny this. Itachi said, do you think this is a trap Tsukihei-san? Tsukihai shook her head, it's possible, but I don't think that's the case. I am more inclined to believe in the other possibility. The other one. Meaning Kirigikure higher ups are pressuring Mizukage sama to abdicate as early as possible? Itachi asked with a thoughtful expression. Tsukihai nodded, probably one of the many means Kirigikure elders are using to pressure Karatachi Yagura into abdicating as soon as possible. Following his confession, Yagura's political power has been taken away completely, and Yagura did not pose any resistance to it but no one in Kirigikure has enough strength to match up to Yagura, as such no one can openly ask him to quit the position of Mizukage, so these are just roundabout methods they are using. After the events following Kirigikure's civil war, 
Kirigikuru's senior management has been doing everything in their power to force Yugura's abdication as early as possible, all the blame for the civil war was also transferred to Yugura's head by secretly manipulating information. The fact that Mizukage became a puppet in the hands of Akatsuki for over a year is only known to a few people, which only includes the Kirigikuru higher-ups and a few elite jonin. None of the other shinobi or civilians in Kirigikuru, nor any other shinobi villages are aware of this information, yet. So putting the blame for everything on Yugura's head has been very easy. Moreover, there has been no statement from Yugura himself to deny the blame, perhaps because Yugura does feel guilty about what all happened to Kirigikuru, after all, in a way, it was partly his fault, so the accusations against him are not wrong either. Overall, public opinion has completely shifted in Yugura's favor, and people are demanding that he abdicates the position of Mizukage as early as possible. Such things are happening even after Yugura has already stated that he will abdicate from the position of Mizukage, but it seems that few people who lust for power can't wait anymore, or perhaps they are skeptical about Yugura's words. After all, this is Kirigikuru, and Kirigikuru's Kage is not selected by the public or the elders of the village, according to the rules and traditions, the strongest shinobi of the village becomes the Mizukage, regardless of their age. This is also the reason why Sabuza dared to launch a coup d'etat. He knew that, if he proves to be the strongest shinobi in Kirigikuru by killing Karatachi Yagura then everyone, even the elders will have to accept him as the Mizukage, although he failed to become the Mizukage, the rules still remain the same. Therefore, even if Yugura has lost his reputation, his strength is still the strongest in Kirigikuru, so anyone weaker than him cannot force him to abdicate up front, as such they are using these indirect underhanded methods, and exploiting the guilt in Yugura's heart. Tsukihai does not know how Yugura died in the canon, but suicide is also one of the many possible causes of his death, similar to how Hitaki Sakumo killed himself, it is possible that Yugura also killed himself. And if Yugura were to die, then without a doubt Terumi Mei will become the next Mizukage. Itachi and Tsukihai have already reached the conclusion that Mei's strength does not meet their requirement for the next Mizukage, and since Sabuza was also a disappointment, so Yugura is the best choice. The fact that Yugura hates Akatsuki helps a lot, and this hatred in Yugura's heart can be exploited, so overall, Yugura can be a good pawn, as such Tsukihai does not want this good pawn to die, at least not before he has proven useful to her, therefore, she and Itachi are here. To make sure that Yugura remains the Mizukage, and at the same time becomes a loyal subordinate of Amitsukumi similar to Pakura, the Godame Kazakage. Itachi said with a sad expression, no matter which village, there are always people who struggle for power and forget the sight of what's truly important, and what truly matters. This is the kind of world we live in. And this cannot be changed, people will always struggle for such petty things, war may stop, peace may come or it may not come, but these basic desires and faults within a human's heart will never change, and these qualities and differences give rise to conflicts, so in a way, it wouldn't be wrong to say that peace will never come, and if you want to accomplish your dream of ending all wars, then you have a very long road ahead of you. Just being the strongest won't help you in this. Tsukihai said. Itachi had a thoughtful expression on his face as he pondered over Tsukihai's words. Tsukihai did not disturb him, and the two continued to silently walk further inside. The reason for bringing Itachi is fairly obvious, Tsukihai wants to subdue Yagura without causing much of a ruckus. In the blink of an eye, the two of them arrived on the first underground floor of the Mizukage building. Along the way, they only encountered two more guards, both of whom were easily taken care of by the two of them, and after extracting information about Yugura's position from one of the guards, Tsukihai and Itachi proceeded. Somewhere on the underground floor. Yugura rubbed the corner of his eye as he tried to make out anything that would give him some lead for the information he has been trying to figure out. The young adult's face shows clear signs of fatigue and emptiness. Physical fatigue because of tirelessly working for the past few days is another thing, Yagura is more fatigued because of the pressure from the elders. 
After heaving a sigh, Yagura pondered over his deduction. Just when he thought that he has reached a conclusion, his mind suddenly shifted, and a bad premonition surged in his heart. Yagura immediately leaned against the wall adjacent to the door of this room to hide and then used and then tried listening to the sound of silent footsteps. One, only a single person. Yagura muttered while listening to the light sound of footsteps coming from a few passages away. Considering that it is midnight currently, any shinobi from the village should not be coming to meet him at this time. And before coming here, Yagura had already instructed the leftover few guards in the Mizukage building to not disturb him, so, according to common sense, and with what little respect they have left for him, nobody would disturb him unless there is an emergency, the possibility of which can't be ruled out. Is there something wrong in the village? This was a momentary thought, and a logical one too, but Yagura denied this possibility. Because if it was really an emergency, then the pace with which this person was coming towards him would have been rushed and panicked, not so quiet and relaxed. Moreover, Yagura wasn't sensing anything going on in the village, if some kind of chaos was going on in the village, then he would have felt that for sure, after all, vibrations are still detectable. An assassin to kill me, was another guess, this one wasn't wrong either, given how much pressure he has been facing for a few days now, it's quite logical that some of them would also use the means of assassination to get rid of him early. When he thought of the possibility of an assassin, Yagura had a bit of hesitation on his face, am I really allowed to live after what I have led the village into? Perhaps I would be better off dead, perhaps the village would be better off with me dead, guilt was already killing him, it would change nothing if he were to die early, it's not as if anyone's going to mourn his death after what he has led the village into. But what's if it's an enemy who wants to use the weak period, was another thought as the image of the masked man, blue-haired kunoichi of the paper style and ripple-patterned eyed shinobi flashed from his memories. And along with memories, anger also appeared in his mind, normally, shinobi are not influenced by their emotions, but Yagura couldn't restrain his anger when he thought of those Akatsuki members again trying to do something to the village. With a gloomy expression, Yagura picked up his double-hooked club and prepared for a battle, if it is Akatsuki then. Thought Yagura as he disappeared from this room. Yagura was controlled by Akatsuki and based on the information he has studied about the Akatsuki, their goal is to collect all the nine bijou, they already have Nibi, and since Ichibi is dead, so it's possible that their next target is Sanbai. But Yagura did not care whether their goal is Sanbai or him, he has to make sure that the village remains safe at all costs, after all, no one in Kirigikure can match up to their strength, the worst comes to worst, he will die, but the village should remain safe. Whoosh! With the sound of breaking past the wind, Yagura appeared in front of the intruder, Bijou Chakra coating his body, killing intent in his move and with anger surging in his heart his double-hooked club with all his strength. He did not want to be careless, because he recognizes the identity of the person standing before him. A black cloak with a golden pattern, and a flame mask, Yagura may not have directly met this person before, but he does know the information about this person, everybody does. It was none other than a member of Amitsukumi standing in front of him, to be more specific, it was Homosubi. Ding! But instead of killing the enemy with a single blow, a loud metal symphony resounded in the underground passage. The reason was that Homosubi blocked his club with a kunai, and only took a single step backward to cancel off the momentum of his strike. Yagura wasn't surprised, Amitsukumi is on organization at the same level as Akatsuki, so it is obvious that killing the enemy won't be so easy, as such. He entered version 2 Bija mode, do not think this village to be a playground for you people. And lunged a kick at Homosubi's head. Boom. But the kick was easily blocked by a red hand made of chakra that extended from a rib cage type chakra wrapped around Homosubi. Once a Jinchuriki enters the Bijou mode the strength behind each of their moves is increased several times, this increase in strength is much more in the version 2 mode, so Yagura was sure that even if it won't kill Homosubi, it would at least send him flying, but the fact that Homosubi stopped that strike so easily was nothing short of a surprise. 
Even the coral that was supposed to have trapped Homosubi was broken away by that ribcage structure. What is this red chakra? Yagura muttered to himself while analyzing the opposite party's move, it couldn't be Susanoo, became based on the intelligence Homosubi Susanoo is golden, but that shape and that evil chakra. Be careful Yagura, that is undoubtedly Susanoo, was what Sanbai said to him. Is that so, in that case, I must use Bijadama, anything else won't work on him. Yagura said and started to condense Bijadama. Amaterasu. But before he could fire the Bijadama on Homosubi, black flames suddenly appeared on his body. Katan. Thought Yagura but soon realized that's not the case here, this is no ordinary fire. Yagura soon realized that what engulfed him is no ordinary fire, it won't just go away and he could only writhe and scream in agony and pain, ah. As all his attempts to get rid of the fire proved to be fruitless. In just a short few moments Yagura collapsed, still burning from the heat of Amaterasu. Damn you! Uchiha was his last thought as he lost consciousness. After Yagura lost consciousness, the bijou cloak on his body disappeared, and the black flames also faded away under Homosubi's command. Defeated him already, huh? Your strength sure has improved Itachi, said Tsukihai as she walked out from the shadows, she observed the entire fight that did not even last thirty seconds, in which Itachi made short work of the mizukage. Homosubi removed his mask and said, I am still not strong enough to match you, Shirsui-san, and Kuroto-san. Tsukihai just smiled and said, you will reach there eventually. Then continued after a pause, anyway, let's see the state of Mizukich. Itachi nodded and gave way to Tsukihai to walk closer and check upon Karatachi Yagura's state. Looking at the miserable figure of Yagura, with several burns on both his hands, legs, face and other body parts, Tsukihai had a pitying look in her eyes. But Tsukihai's pitiful suddenly changed and she covered her nose and asked Itachi a more important question, Amaterasu deserves to be the strongest katan ninjutsu, he won't die, right? The reason being that the smell of cooked meat was permeating in the air. Amaterasu is obviously stronger than her Ashihomi, because of its characteristics of burning for seven days and seven nights. It may not be as violent as Ashihomi, but it still ranks above Ashihomi. This is also one of the many reasons why Tsukihai made sure to bring Itachi with her. In the canon, Itachi easily defeated Yagura by the use of Amaterasu. Itachi nodded, he shouldn't die as long as he receives timely medical attention. Tsukihai nodded and said while she printed the hand seals, All right Itachi, in that case, prepare to use what we have planned, I'll make sure that Sanbai does not interfere. After that, she activated her eternal Manjiku Sharingan in order to stop Sanbai's interference. 